So UN forces, NATO troops, I mean, a, a lot of good comes from uh, combined forces today, but, but that, it doesn't come without its, its level of difficulty, sir. I mean, what would you say those are? It's sometimes easy for us to find first-rate fighting formations, French commando units, British guards regiments. I mean, our allies have got people that will uh, stand up to battle conditions as well as we will. What they don't bring with them is what the Americans have unique capability to do, which is logistics, communications, medical support, uh, helicopter, or m Army aviation, uh, never mind the firepower, the intelligence collection systems from space. So frequently we'll look at allies and say, yeah, we admire these guys, but if we bring them, we've got to supply too much to keep them in the fight. So they're, they're viewed as an expense as opposed to an asset. How hard is it for troops to work together? Pretty tough. Mm -hmm. And you know, all these coalition wars, and the U.S. has been involved in a series of them, they all start with a principal violation of, the, of war, which is unity of command. Our forces in Afghanistan, 100,000 U.S. troops, 50,000 NATO allies, mm -hmm. a quarter of a million Afghan troops, and nobody's really in charge. We have a NATO commander, in theory, uh, but all these uh, coalitions, the Dutch, the Germans, the French, come with different rules of engagement mm -hmm. and with their own political lines of approval and oversight. Uh, so again, coalition warfare is the worst of all forms uh, except the alternatives. You never mm -hmm. want to fight alone, and certainly in Europe, the Brits paid a heavy price to achieve victory in World War II far greater than the United States did.